Hello, thank you for joining me at Bert's Books. Um, I've been out into the outside world uh, for the first time, um, really, um, as far as going into central London goes and visiting shops there, uh, the first time since all this started. So, a little bit of a weird experience, if I'm honest, but, um, you know, it had to be done. Uh, things have sort of opened up a bit and the bookshops are in business again. So uh, my first little bout of real world buying in a long time. So what did I come up with? Well first of all uh, Graham King's Kill Test. Uh, a novel of future carnage. More savage than rollerball. More prophetic than a clockwork orange. Um, this happens to be a dupe. I already had a copy of this but um, I can't really turn it down for the price. Uh, maybe I'll give this away as a competition prize or for a, you know, if I get a significant number of subscribers or something like this. Um, I haven't yet read the copy I already had. I always kind of thought it probably um, I've got a few that you could loosely categorise as um, perhaps derivative of Clockwork Orange, so I'd always imagined it would be something like that, but um, I have yet to get around to reading it, sadly, but um, maybe do something about that in coming weeks. Next up, Impact by uh, R.V. Fodor and G.J. Taylor. Now there was, um, along with a lot of um, sword and sorcery. Um, the second hand racks also seem to have a lot of science fiction on uh, on display. Um, neither genre I'm that big on, but I thought I'd take a, take a punt on this. It's going cheap. So um, this concerns itself with gigantic meteors hurtling through space towards a head on collision with Earth. Yes, well, what else could go wrong? You know? um, yeah, we'll see. I, can, you know, I can't really turn it down for the price. Next up, uh, now I remember reading this in the mid-90s. Uh, James Kelman, How Late It Was, How Late. Um, a Scottish author. At the time I read this, it was during that phase when, um, I suppose, the, the, what you might call the vernacular novel, as, as represented by train spotting, had, had kind of risen to prominence. And um, I believe James Kelman actually had been writing a lot longer than Irvin Welsh had been, but um, this was another of those books, kind of very raw kind of slice of life, written in kind of a Glaswegian dialect. So, yeah, long, long, 25 years or something since I've read this, but um, nice to see it again. Uh, next, uh, Palomares Bomb Girls by the promisingly named Johnny Pulp, a writer I'm not familiar with at all. This was sort of rather a random choice, but um, I spotted it on the shelves and thought, well, maybe. But I see he's got endorsement here from Stuart Home, who I am more familiar with. In fact, I've met Stuart Home a long time ago. But, uh, did meet him at some event or other. It's, uh, it's, I guess it's in that sort of vein. Like a, Luca like a Lacanian Tolkien horror shot by Peter Jackson. Okay, and Stuart Home writes, Palomari Bomb Girls is so over the top, it could only have been written by Johnny Pulp or me. If you've been dreaming of a roller coaster ride through the dark side of a sick mind with absolutely no redeeming features, this is the book for you. If you're a literary bore, Welcome to your worst nightmare. Oh, uh, okay, sounds vaguely promising then. I've no idea who Johnny Pulp is, but yes, we'll see. Now finally, I was somehow unaware that there was a novel of Get Carter. It's a film I've seen many times, uh, quite an admirer of. You know, I also have my eyes on that soundtrack album, but I never quite realised for some reason that there was a novel by Ted Lewis, originally published in 1970, Jack's Return Home. Now the story, more or less recognisable to, you know, if you're familiar with the film. One major difference is the location. The cover represents this as Doncaster, but in fact it's, I think it's meant to be Scunthorpe that it's set in. Um, as opposed to near the, the Newcastle location of the film, but not, I don't think that makes a lot of difference to it. It's it's this kind of rather, I suppose, bleak, industrialised landscape of the period, 
and Jack is this kind of avenging angel returning home to unravel the fate of his brother. Now Jack is, uh, there's a lot of talk in the cover blurb about hard men. I think this is a 90s reprint of it. This, this would have come out during that kind of period of lad mags and all that kind of business. So there, there, there's a lot of talk of, of rather ad admiring talk about hard men on the back. Jack on the face of it is a pretty cold unfeeling, unyielding character. The only kind of glimmer of warmth you get from him is the feelings he has for his, his late brother Frank. Frank being a member of the family who wasn't evidently cut out for that sort of life whereas Jack uh, seems to have flourished within that sort of underworld setting. Frank wasn't quite cut from the same cloth but seems to have met this rather mysterious and unpleasant end which would suggest he'd unwittingly got caught up in some rather unpleasant underworld dealings. So we see Jack, uh, he starts off with him on, his, him on the train up from London where he works as an enforcer for some shady underworld boss who happens that Jack is on the sly up to no good with the guy's wife or girlfriend and actually is plotting to uh, abscond with her to South Africa. So Jack is already building up trouble for himself on that front even before we get into the main bit of the narrative. Now his brother's death, he was found in a, in a wrecked car in the bottom of a, a pit or a quarry um, having ingested the best part of a whole bottle of whiskey. Now Frank isn't the sort of person to have done that. I don't, I don't think he's a drinker. I think it just describes him as someone who would make half a pint last. So Jack's suspicions are aroused as to what fate might have befell his brother. Uh, he dives headlong into this really shady, bleak sort of world of uh, grimy pubs and uh, betting shops and uh, you know operators who... It's a world of, it's, it's a world of this strange kind of borderline between respectability and criminality. There are these kind of high level local players in Scunthorpe within this who on the surface are kind of society people but uh, Jack is evidently pushing too hard and asking too many questions and lining up further trouble for himself in the process. Um, like the film it, it's, it's bleak, it conveys the atmosphere of the period very effectively I think but uh, there's not many redeeming features to it Jack uh, there's this small glimmer of humanity within him but apart from that the teenage girl in this story has kind of been exploited by some of these villains that Jack is he's protective towards her because he's related to her possibly more than Frank realized in fact there's a bit of a subplot there so there are, yeah there are there are certain differences the film isn't quite a carbon reproduction of this of this narrative that you know it's, like I say it's it's pretty much recognizable to fans of the film Jackie's I mean you kind of visualize Michael Caine as you read this you know <laughs> inevitably I suppose but uh, you don't actually get some of the standout lines of dialogue that fans of the film will be familiar with you don't actually get those you know I think some of those might have been a, you know a screenwriter's concoction rather than the novelists but if you're a fan of the film you will tear right through this book it's 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 gripping it's harsh grim as it is slimy and irredeemable as many of these characters are eric you know you think of the eric as portrayed by ian hendry in the film he's this kind of a bit of a piece of shit and he's the yeah, he's the equivalent in here you recognize the characters like that but it you know it's it's a gripper is you know I, I wish i'd known of this earlier and it's a kind of nice Nice chance find. I think um, Ted Lewis sort of kind of got acclaimed as a kind of founding father of the British strand of noir, if noir purists will allow for such a thing. Um, I believe he, he died relatively young, but uh, yeah, this this is a really gripping read. Good night!